In today's lecture, we're going to talk about electronic control devices, or what people normally consider to be tasers. So they go by many different names. They go by electronic restraint device, electronic control device, which is the most common, electronic incapacitation device, conducted energy weapon, and conductive energy weapon. I don't know why, but the verbiage is con constantly changing mainly on law enforcement level. For civilians, it really doesn't matter because a taser is a taser is a taser, or an ECD is a taser, so. An electronic control device means a portable device designed as a weapon capable of injuring, immobilizing, or inflicting pain on an individual by the discharge of electrical current. This is from the State of Maryland, Criminal Code 20 in 2014. So by this definition, a stun gun, a regular stun gun, can also be considered an electronic control device as well. But under our definition, it's, you know, a taser, which will induce neuromuscular incapacitation, which is what we'll talk about later on in the next lecture. So we'll start off by talking about the taser. What is a taser? Taser stands for Tom A. Swift Electric Rifle. It's a brand of electronic control device, literally the most well-known. There are a couple other manufacturers, but this is pretty much the top dog or the gorilla in the industry. It utilizes high voltage and low amperage in order to disable a target, just as a stun gun does. The Taser has about 50,000 volts on a charge and the amperage is I believe 2.3 milliamps. The difference between this and a stun gun however is that this is a long range device. It utilizes dart probes which are tiny little fish hooks that are propelled by nitrogen through the cartridge. These probes when they properly hit the target they cycle for between 5 to 30 seconds depending on the model. The X26 and M26 models, for example, will go for 5 seconds, whereas the Taser C2 or Bolt or Taser Pulse will run for 30 seconds. The law enforcement models actually run a lot quicker, which are 5 seconds long because you just need to subdue a target. You don't have to shoot them and get away. So how do these electronic control devices work? Well, here we have an X26 model. It has a safety switch at the end of the device, which you have to flip up in order to activate it. The bottom of the device is where the DPM, or digital power magazine, is housed, which is what activates or powers the device. These DPMs normally run for 100 to 200 five-second shocks and longer shocks for other models. The cartridge release tab is where you insert the cartridge or remove it. All Taser models have a laser sight and some have low intensity lights or LEDs. Now the Taser cartridge, the way that it works, as already mentioned, the darts, which are look just like little fish hooks, are deployed through nitrogen or by nitrogen. There are, and they're connected through like fish line uh, wires in order to dart out and hit your target up to 15 feet away. And they have these pockets of AFIDs, which are anti felon identification tags. Basically, when those pop out, it will help law enforcement identify the cartridge that was used in the particular incident. So as mentioned earlier in the last couple lectures, there are other brands of electronic control device. Carbon Arms was the most notable, but as of January 14th, 2014, they were actually issued a permanent injunction by the courts to actually cease and desist their business. They pretty much had to shut down their entire business and they weren't able to manufacture or sell their devices anymore because it was determined that they had actually infringed upon a 
upon one of Taser International's patents. So, as a result, they're not in business anymore. Phaser Electronics is really the only competitor on the market right now. The thing with uh, Phaser Electronics is that they have a comparable device with their Phaser Enforcer model, and they have other models too, but this is their main propri proprietary unit. They have multiple different cartridges that you can use for the device and it's also transferable to taser devices as well but we'll talk about all the different cartridges and everything else later on in another lecture but those are the other brands this concludes this lecture in the next lecture we'll discuss the concept of neuromuscular incapacitation and how the dark probes work on the body